Promote your page ads. Let us continue inside the Facebook advertisement. In the last video, we've discussed about boost post ad. In this video, we're going to start with promote your page or page like advertisements. We've now seen how we can create a Facebook fan page. So in this video, we'll see the advantages, the methods, and the benefits of promoting your Facebook fan page through Facebook advertisement. First of all, Facebook page like ads are used to increase your Facebook fan base quickly. Obviously, you can go inside your niche and you can increase your fan base exponentially. Ability to like your page from one click. Your prospect or your target market can like your page. After liking, they will begin to see your posts in their newsfeed. They'll start seeing your posts, your photographs, and your updates on a daily basis in their newsfeed. Obviously, just great for brand building. Questions typically work good for engagement ads. The goal is to get like and fan. So, what we'll do next is we'll go quickly inside my Facebook account, and we'll see how we can set up a Facebook fan page or a Facebook like ad quickly. First, we should go to Facebook Ads Manager, which is located here on the left side of the Facebook screen. It'll load up for a few seconds. You can also do this through your Facebook Power Editor, but since the Facebook Ads Manager is simple to work with, I'll show it through this particular method. The next step is to click on Create Ads. Then, you need to choose the objective of your campaign or your ad. For our demonstration, let's choose Promote Your Page, since our goal is to get likes for our page. After that, Facebook will ask you which particular fan page of yours you want to promote, or you can also enter the URL. After choosing the page, the next question is, who do you want your ads to reach? That means they are talking about your target audience. This is the most important thing, so you have to set up your audience or your target market correctly. Now, you can choose your custom audiences, but I'll keep that blank as for now. In locations, let's put five English-speaking countries, which are the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. We can get a high reach by choosing these countries, and since English is our universal language, it is easy for us to connect and communicate with them. You should also include your home country, because you can also get a lot of audience here. Next is age. Let's keep it blank. Language, let's keep it blank. Here is important. Interest. In this particular page, which we want to promote, it is about making money online. Depending on the niche that you want to promote, you have to set this up. Let's put make money online. Let's also put online lead generation. Let's do one for online marketing. There are a lot of target people, so you just need to choose properly. So, you can see that we are increasing our potential reach over here. And as we have said before, the wider your reach is, the more number of people you have, which is totally better for you. And once you have input some keywords in there, Facebook is also going to help you by giving suggestions, which you can browse too. In behaviors, let's keep it blank for now. Next. Under Connections, there's Facebook Pages, which is also very important, so you have to set that up appropriately. You could also exclude people who like your page already and add some more pages for that. But for our demonstration, I'll leave it blank. Moving on, you can choose your daily budget. You can choose $5 to $10 per day, and you can also set up the schedule of your ads. After completing that page, click on Choose Ad Creative. Nowadays, Facebook offers you two kinds of setup. One is your image setup, and the other is video. If you choose the image setup, you can upload your own images. Choose images from your Facebook page or from the stock images. On the other hand, if you choose the video setup, you can upload a video or choose from your library. You can also create a slideshow if that is better for you. Next. What text and links do you want to use? Inside the text box, we could write, Helping you to become online marketing experts instantly. So you can see the ad preview on the right side of our screen. Then, let's check the advanced options. We could add a nice headline there. 
Usually, you could just write the name of your fan page. So, let's put it there. In the landing view, let's just keep it blank. So, we're almost done with this. The good thing is, Facebook always gives you the ad preview at the right side immediately. You can see how it looks in the desktop news feed, the mobile news feed, and in the desktop right column. They all look different in each preview. So you also have the option to remove it if you don't like how it looks. I believe I have given you enough knowledge on how we can set up a Facebook page like ads. First, select the page you want to promote. Give a campaign name. Choose your locations, including your own country. Choose your interest very, very carefully. Then, you can exclude the people who like your page. See your target potential reach and set up your daily budget. You can even put ad set name, name also. Then, you can select your image or video and put your text and headline, which will all appear on the ad preview, on the opposite side of the screen. Another cool thing which you must do, you have to create three or four sets of different ads with different images and headlines. This is to see which one is performing well and which is giving you the highest ROI. I believe we have discussed how to create your own Facebook fan page well enough. I hope you are enjoying this stuff, guys, as much as I enjoyed making the video. In the next video, we will make another Facebook advertisement, which is called the External Pages Ad. This is where we will learn how to promote your other pages, other affiliate offers, or other pages through Facebook ads. Stay tuned, and this topic is going to make you super duper ninja. See you in the next video. How to Avoid FB Jail Hi guys, in the last video, we've gone through the reason why Facebook is one of the best places to market and promote your business. Also, we've seen a diagram of the different strategies to which we can promote our offers online. Though Facebook is undoubtedly the best place to brand ourselves and market our business, Facebook is also becoming stricter day by day. And there's a very, very important reason behind that. Facebook has been built predominantly as a social media platform. It was built for you to connect with your friends, families, colleagues, and for you to give status updates like photographs and stuff. At the same time, you could say that Facebook is also a very strong marketing platform. But what happens is, different marketers do a lot of activities which Facebook does not like. For example, spamming people, sending annoying messages, and whatnot. Now, Facebook is becoming very, very alert about all of these things, and they have put all the algorithms in place to watch these activities every time. So, doing all these annoying activities, which Facebook does not like, things that are strictly no no when it comes to Facebook's policies and procedures, will put your account under threat. First of all, Facebook will put you under something called the Facebook Jail, and if you continue to do those things which Facebook already warned you about, they will also terminate your account forever. Facebook does give warnings and puts your account on hold for a period of 7 days to 30 days, and then, if you do not abide by the terms and conditions, they might seize your account forever. Now, as we always say, it's better to take precaution. If you know in advance the things to avoid to protect your Facebook account as a marketer, then you'd be more prepared and confident to execute your FB marketing plan of attack. In this particular section, we'll be discussing the things you should not do as a marketer. Because I want to make it very clear, once you abide by the rules of Facebook, once you do not do the things that many marketers ignore, do not know or do, then you will be absolutely safe. First of all, you do not annoy your friends by spamming your links all over Facebook. Once you start spamming your links across Facebook, Facebook keeps a track of your account. And number two, there are certain links which have already been banned in the past. One can get blocked in Facebook by sending too many messages. Once you send someone a friend request, and that person does not respond, and if you keep on sending message, or if you keep on sending some spam links to someone, that's a must not do in Facebook. And of course, once you have sent a friend request to a person, do not keep on doing it, as this is harassment 
in Facebook's policies and terms. Account can be blocked temporarily if you do all these things, and you will see that for some time, Facebook will tell you that you cannot send friend requests for seven days, or something like that. And if you continue doing that, they can also permanently block you for sending too many friend requests. Be careful about this thing. Do not post in groups constantly. This is very important for marketers, especially in the network marketing niche. People have a tendency of joining different Facebook groups along Make Money and they start spamming their links. Don't do that because your account is being tracked. Don't worry because I'll show you the proper way to do that. Just don't start spamming different groups. Don't buy fans. Once you've set up a Facebook fan page, never buy fake fans from Fiverr. This is a serious way to get your account blocked. When Facebook warns you about something, it's best to follow them, else you need to be ready to face the consequences. Especially as marketers, some have a tendency of breaking the rules. But as a Facebook marketer, if Facebook warns you about something, do check it out. And do abide by the rules and regulations. So there, we've tried to give you all the points in a nutshell, which you must not do inside Facebook, especially as a marketer. Do not do all these things which we have written down for you. Then, you can be rest assured that your Facebook account will never be blocked temporarily or permanently, and you don't have to go inside the Facebook jail. So do take note of these things. And in the next video, we're going to jump inside the real juicy stuff. We're going to see how Facebook graphs work and how you can start to get 5,000 targeted friends within 90 days. So, this course is going to be more exciting and exciting. Stay tuned and see you in the next module. Bridge Marketing and FB Chat Part 2 In this video, we'll see some more ninja Facebook chat tips. We'll call this the Facebook or FB chat recipe. So let's go ahead. The first tip, which I want to share with you, is staying focused. It is very simple, but a powerful strategy which can absolutely make or break your Facebook marketing business. As a marketer, you have to understand one thing. Time is very valuable. You have to spend a maximum of 30 minutes every day chatting with your target market. In the last video, We've shown you how to connect with your target market and then spend a maximum of 30 minutes chatting with them. Else, this can easily put you out of focus. This was my problem when I started marketing with Facebook for free. I used to spend hours just talking to people and getting connected with them. But you should just be spending a maximum of 30 minutes and then just log out of Facebook. This is not a Facebook rule, but for you to manage your time wisely. Tip number two, research your prospect. Do some basic research work on your prospects, like looking at your common friends or whether they have a blog or not. Now, when someone sends a Facebook friend request, the first thing I look at is our mutual friends. If I see that we have some good quality of mutual friends, that's the only time I accept their request. The reason is because it talks a lot about their circle of influence or the kind of marketers they mingle with. The next thing is, you should always check out if they have a blog or not, because if they have their personal website or blog, this means that they have this stature or reputation as a marketer. What kind of group is he associated with? Same kind of issue. This helps determine if the prospect is worth your time or not, because you only have 30 minutes of Facebook time in your hands every day. You should use that time with prospects who are worth your time. FB chat number three, use bridge marketing. As we have discussed earlier, use bridge marketing technique to bridge the gap and connect to your target audience immediately and build rapport. Tip number four, use effective icebreakers. Check out prospects' common interest areas like sports, books, movies, etc., and use them as effective icebreakers. If you talk to fellow marketers about marketing all the time, or just sending them links and all, some people don't like these. They feel it's some kind of harassment, and some people might even report you to Facebook 
or unfriend you. So always build rapport by using some icebreakers, like, oh, I see that you like rich dad, poor dad, or I see you like rugby. My favorite team is New Zealand All Black. These are the things that personally interest them. You can talk about these things before talking about the business stuff. Some people don't like to go to the business talk directly, so always use icebreakers. But then again, everyone responds differently. Tip number five, use edge rank. As shown in the earlier video, always use this edge rank mechanism by adding people as your close friends. This is actually builds on the rapport with that person. This person is attracted to you as a marketer and is already sold to you before you even start talking to him. Use newsfeed, close friend, technique to position yourself effectively. Tip number six, answer questions. In any kind of market, some people will have questions. For example, in the internet marketing niche, some people might have technical questions when it comes to getting some screenshots or questions related to putting up their blog. If they ask the question in their news feed or to you directly, always answer their questions to build your authority. Your effort or help will never go to waste as people you help will come back someday to do business with you. Tip number seven, create your pipeline. This is very, very important. Remember, you can have 5,000 Facebook friends plus thousands of followers. There are over a billion of people on Facebook. There are millions in different target markets. As time is vital for you, and you can only spend a maximum of 30 minutes per day for chatting, open 10 to 15 chat windows and chat with them simultaneously. I've been using this particular technique for the last few months, and it's very effective. Now, this also helps you boost your confidence because, number one, so many people are in the pipeline, so you always have people to talk to even if someone leaves you in your conversation. Some prospects might take 5 to 15 minutes before replying, so opening multiple conversations is actually an effective use of your time. And number two, as a marketer, you're able to maintain your posture because you have so many people to chat with. FB chat tip number eight, send videos. This is completely a ninja trick and works like magic. You don't even have to show your face in the video to do this. You can have screen recording videos by using screen recorders like Camtasia or ScreenFlow. Instead of normal text chat, send your prospect a customized video to answer their question or sharing some cool tips. Also, instead of using a normal text chat, you can use a video selfie introducing yourself. Say, Hi John, I'm glad to be connected to you here on Facebook. I'm so and so from this country. I do this and that, mentioning something the person you're talking to could relate with. I see we're both interested in building our business. It doesn't have to be a long video, 30 seconds would even suffice. Send it via Dropbox or upload it via YouTube on unlisted mode. Using videos this way will differentiate you to the 99% of marketers out there. You will see the difference in the reaction almost immediately. Everybody wants to talk to a person who's different and sincere, a person who takes his job seriously. And most importantly, FB chat tip number nine, move to call to action. This is the most crucial step for your success. Now that you have initiated some interaction, built rapport and authority, don't be afraid to send your business related link. Offer the opportunity or goods that you have to the other person. Because who knows, he might just be looking for what you have. In other words, do not be afraid of rejection. Use your bait at the right moment. Remember, you have 5,000 FB friends and growing. You have your Facebook fan page. You have your followers. So you don't have to be afraid. Instead, you should be there building your business with a lot of courage. Bridge Marketing and FB Chat Part 2 I believe these nine Facebook chat recipes are going to open up your mind about what you could do with Facebook to grow your business without the use of ads. Use these techniques diligently, take action, and apply. I'll see you in the next video. 
In this video, we're going to talk about some Facebook Live best practices. And these are as recommended by Facebook. Now, the first thing that Facebook recommend is that you let people know ahead of time when you're going to broadcast. And this is a very good idea because obviously you want to get as big an audience as possible and it's not like you publish a TV guide or something. So you want to let people know ahead of time when you're going to broadcast. Now, there are lots of ways that you can do this. I suppose the easiest way is via Facebook itself to uh, let your Facebook friends, let your Facebook followers know that you're going to be broadcasting via Facebook Lives so that they can log in and watch your video at the time it's going to go out. You can also do a shout out to your followers on Twitter. And if you're aiming at a business audience, then probably making a post to your followers on LinkedIn would be a good idea as well. Uh, something else that you can do is to send an email to your list, of course, just like you would if you were holding um, a webinar or something like that. You would send an email to your list to let them know. And you can do that for Facebook Live and encourage them to sign up. And of course, you should post the date and time on your blog so that your blog followers can tune in. And also anybody who happens to find your blog through an internet search can also log in and find out when your broadcast is going out. You should also go live when you have a strong connection. Now, Wi-Fi tends to work best. But if you can't find a nearby network, then you'll want a 4G connection. Now, I know that 4G isn't available everywhere. Um, in most countries, it's available just in large cities. But if you can find a 4G connection, then that's great. Otherwise, you'll want to have a Wi-Fi connection to uh, stream that. And if you have a weak signal, the Go Live button will be greyed out and you won't be able to broadcast. So you want to make sure that you've got that ahead of time before you start to uh, do your broadcast. When you're planning, when you're going to do it from, you want to make sure that it is somewhere where you're going to get a nice strong signal. You also want to write a compelling description before going live. And a great description will capture fans' attention and help them understand what your broadcast is all about. And that means they're more likely to watch it right through to the end and they're more likely to hear your message in its entirety. You should also ask your viewers to follow you and receive notifications when you go live. So call out that your audience can tap on the follow button on live videos and videos that were live and then opt in to get notifications the next time that you go live. So again, it uh, gives them more notifications so that they'll know ahead of time when your broadcast is going to go out. And you want to say hello to commenters by name and respond to their comments. Because one of the great things about Facebook Live is that you can communicate with your audience. They can send you comments which you can read as you're making your video and then you can respond to them in real time. And your audience will be thrilled to hear you mention their name and answer their questions when you're live. And you should broadcast for longer periods of time to reach more people. Because the longer you broadcast, the more people are likely to discover you and they're going to invite their friends on Facebook to watch the video. Now, Facebook recommends that you go live for at least 10 minutes and you can stay live for up to 90 minutes. So you've got a lot of scope there, a lot of time that you can use. And finally, Facebook recommend that you be creative and go live often. So you can try different types of broadcasts. You know, try giving a talk to camera, try giving um, a webinar or a live webinar. Really, I suppose you could call it over Facebook Live. Uh, you could try a how-to. Lots of different things just to keep your audience interested, to keep them coming back for more. Don't do the same thing over and over again because that's just going to be boring. And you should go live frequently to keep your audience engaged. You know, out of sight is out of mind, so you want to make sure that people keep coming back for more and that they see something that's going to interest them every time.
So there you go, just a few Facebook Live best practices. Facebook Live is a fantastic app and it has lots of potential for the future and it's definitely a wave that you want to ride. But it's not perfect. So in this video, I want to examine some of the downsides of Facebook Live. And I suppose the biggest downside is that it's live, so mistakes can't be edited out. So if you do or say something stupid or if something goes wrong, then everyone is going to know about it. So there's no taking it back. There's no second chance to do it again and get it right like you can do if you're getting um, a YouTube video together or something like that. And while you'll never avoid banana skins completely, you can lessen the chances of an encounter. And that's by following what I call the three R's. Rehearse, rehearse, and rehearse. So you want to practice in front of a mirror until you've got your delivery perfect, especially if you're not used to being on camera. And you want to practice the stuff that you're going to do in your videos until you've got the routine right down to a T so that you know exactly what to do and you've tried it so often and you've done it so often you could do it in your sleep practically and then when you actually have to go ahead and do it live uh, then the chances of something actually going wrong are going to be reduced. Note I say reduced. Things might still go wrong but you'll lessen the chances of that happening. Another downside to Facebook Live, again because it's live, there's no music or editing to your videos. So, as I was just saying, you can't edit out mistakes. And you can't build atmosphere through adding music. Lots of people like to add some music to their videos to build the right sort of atmosphere. Well, you can't do that really in any type of Facebook Live video. In fact, there's no post-production of any kind. You know, it is what it is, and it goes out live, and what they see is what they get. In fact, the only way that you can have music in your videos is to have music being played in the background. But you must get the volume right though, or it could be distracting and drown out what you're trying to say. And this can be a big problem because chances are you're not going to be monitoring the sound as it's going out either. So you never really know exactly how it's going to sound unless somebody sends you um, a message saying we can't hear you speak up or something like that. You can, though, save your videos for editing later. You can save them to the camera roll option that you have on Facebook Live. And this means that you can post them on video sites like YouTube in a more polished format. You can also post them on your Facebook timeline as a video as well. So it does give you that uh, flexibility. Another thing is it's so new that not many people know about it. And this is perhaps the biggest problem. It was only launched at the beginning of 2016. Initially, it was only available in the US and then only on um, Apple iOS. And it's being rolled out to other countries and it's being rolled out on Android. But, of course, not every country has it. And, of course, you also need a 4G signal or Wi-Fi for it to work properly, which is another big problem, especially getting 4G. I know that most large cities in the U.S. have 4G. In other countries, uh, that's a bit slower. Uh, in rural areas, well, you know, it's just a distant dream, really. So you really do need to have a nice strong Wi-Fi signal in order to use it if uh, 4G isn't available. So, again, that's a big problem. And you'll need to tell your followers and subscribers, especially those who aren't on Facebook, about the app as well as your content. 
And this makes double the workload because you've got to convince people to, first of all, sign up for Facebook if they're not already members, and then to install the software on their smartphones or to uh, go to your Facebook page. You have to verify your Facebook page, and it's a lot of hassle. And so it makes a lot of workload for you. And, of course, because it's live, it's not always a convenient time for your viewers to tune in and see your broadcast especially if they're in a different time zone. And this is something else, you know, if you happen to have um, a video up on YouTube, well, people can log in and watch it at their convenience. If it's going out live, then, of course, they've actually got to be there at that time. And they've got to have their computer or their smartphone or their tablet device on at that particular moment. And finally, it's not available in every country in the world yet. It's being rolled out, I think it's in about 40 countries at the time that I'm making this video. Uh, it's across the US and it's in a lot of uh, countries in Europe. But other places in the world, it's just simply not available. So if you have a far-flung audience, then they're not going to be able to see it at all. So there you go, just a few downsides to using Facebook Live. Facebook Live presents a range of opportunities for marketers, particularly for internet marketers. And I'm going to cover some of them in this video. Many marketers are already aware of the power of Facebook to build their brand, for audience awareness, and to create a buzz around product launches and so on. And of course, many marketers already harness the power of video on YouTube and other video sharing sites. Now, Facebook Live enables you to combine the best of both worlds and add an edge to the proceedings that comes from being live. You know, this is happening right now. The thing is, though, not many people are using Facebook Live for internet marketing purposes at the moment. Now, mainly it's used for streaming personal stuff, you know, stuff like this kid's birthday party that you can see on this phone. And this means that you're going to have a competitive edge over other marketers because not many marketers are using it. So you're going to be able to get out front and stay there. So when it comes to using Facebook Live for marketing purposes, your objectives are to, first of all, build a big audience of followers. And this is going to be in addition to those who already follow you on Facebook. And you want to build the trust of that audience. And the ways that you do that are by providing value and by being highly consistent. And really, this isn't much of a surprise. This is just what you would do on any other media. But what you want to do with Facebook Live is you'll want to get to the point where people are actively looking for your content and they're looking forward to see more of it. And because so much of the content on Facebook Live is rather amateurish right now, you can actually do this fairly easily. Simply come up with a format and make sure that the topic is nicely relevant to the nature of your niche. And you want to use the best production values that you can. So you want to make sure that the lighting is good, that the sound is good, that you've rehearsed your presentation, that you're not sort of umming and ahhing and that sort of thing, so that you can simply talk to the camera or you can do the uh, type of demonstration if you're doing a how-to video that makes you look really professional. So try to come up with a good theme and something to tie it all together and it's going to keep your audience interested. And there are other opportunities with something like Facebook Live as well. And, and it, you know, it doesn't hurt to add something that's more dynamic or something that's more interesting or something that you know, just has a personal touch occasionally. So to put it another way, take advantage of the medium. And if you have a following on Facebook already, 
then it's highly likely that they're going to be excited by the opportunity to see you live. You know, they may have um, seen other videos that you've posted on Facebook or on places like YouTube. They may have seen the pictures that you've got on Facebook. But to actually have you there talking to them live, they're going to be interested in that. They'll know then that you really are a real person. And it also means that you can make more dynamic and interesting content that's going to benefit from being live. You know, let me give you some examples. So, for example, if you have a travel blog and an associated Facebook page, then you can live stream from whatever exotic locations you happen to be at. And it'll be like people really are there with you at that moment because you're sharing that time with them. And, of course, Facebook Live is interactive. People can send you questions and you can answer them live on air. So that does have that element to it. So it is really like they are there with you in whatever location that you've traveled to. Likewise, if you're in the fitness niche, you can do personalized training sessions where people can send you comments and questions as the session progresses. And it'll be just like having a personal trainer come into someone's home. And it could do wonders for building your brand and building your credibility. Because if somebody sends you a question about how do I do this particular exercise, uh, or you know, let's say it's a yoga blog like this lady here, and someone sends in a message saying, how do you do this particular move or this particular position? And she could demonstrate it right there and then live. That's going to add tremendous credibility because people can see, you know, yes, she does know what she's talking about, you know, that sort of thing. And of course, you're going to combine this with strong branding on your website a strong social media presence on Facebook and elsewhere, and promotional events that drive more people to your videos. Now, there's not much scope for direct sales via Facebook Live at present. But let's take a slightly different view here. Take a slightly, you know, gaze into your marketing crystal ball for a moment and just have a think here. Now, Google's parent company, Alphabet, had net quarterly revenue of $5.25 billion in the first quarter of 2016. A hefty chunk of that came from selling advertising on YouTube and YouTube videos. Well, you can see where this is heading, can't you? While the advantages of Facebook Live to online businesses can be fairly obvious, there is actually tremendous scope for offline businesses to use Facebook Live to get more business and to get more people through the door. Now, many offline businesses already harness the power of Facebook to build their brand and to encourage customers to visit. Now, with Facebook Live, you can take that to the next level. You can give some personality and you can show what's going on behind the scenes. And this is one exciting type of content that offline businesses can use. And again, it builds trust. It builds trust in the business and in the brand. Let me give you some examples. Now, let's say you own a restaurant. A big concern for a lot of people is kitchen cleanliness. You often read in local newspapers or see on local TV news about how a certain restaurant has been raided by the health department and shut down and you hear horror stories about people who've got food poisoning and all the rest of it. So some people are a bit wary about eating in certain restaurants because they're not sure how clean it is behind the scenes. Well, let's say you could do a behind-the-scenes tour if you happen to own a restaurant and you can show the standard of hygiene and cleanliness in your restaurant kitchen to reassure customers that your food is safe, uh, that you take hygiene seriously, and so on. Or another thing that you could do if you have a restaurant is you could have your chef prepare a new dish. You could show the audience 
your chef actually putting this dish together, actually cooking it right there in front of their very eyes live so they know that there's nothing being edited around. They know that this is actually happening at the time that they're watching it. And then you could, uh, say, offer a discount to uh, anyone who makes a reservation in you know, X minutes quoting a reference code that they'll be able to have this particular new dish at a discount. And especially if you're running a restaurant and it's a slow night, there's not a lot of people coming in, this might help to get people through the doors. Something else that you could do if you own um, a bricks and mortar store and you're opening a new store or you're introducing a new product line, you could give a sneak peek behind the scenes. You could give a virtual tour of your new store um, before it opens. You should give an idea as to the new product line. And that's going to give you a competitive edge and it's going to generate interest and it's going to make more people be inclined to come through the door. You can also use Facebook Live to do Q&As for your business, you know, a question and answer session. And you can use it, as you're saying, to show off products. And you can use it to do special offers. You know, you can give um, a discount code out over Facebook Live and say that anybody who comes in within the next X number of days with that discount code can get 10% off or get something for free. And that's going to encourage people to come in. And if you're launching some kind of event, then this is the perfect opportunity to get people involved because you can get the word out and you can actually, you know, it's like you're talking to them about it one on one. If your business isn't focused on media creation and internet marketing, then you probably don't want to invest all of your time into creating content for the web. However, what you can do is stream events interviews, Q&As and backstage passes and then promote those via Facebook and other social media. And these will both help you to build more brand visibility and trust with your existing fans and it's going to help new people to discover your organization. What you could do is simply set up a camera in the corner of your room and the longer you leave it running the more followers you'll get and there's no reason for you to have to change your routine at all if you have an exciting and bustling business. And with Facebook Live, at the time that I'm making this video, you can actually stream for up to 90 minutes. So it's an hour and a half to let people see what it's like behind the scenes in your organization. You know, and it's, it's a bit like a webcam, but it's streamed via Facebook Live. You'll need to get another smartphone or tablet to do this, and you'll also need a good Wi-Fi connection. And if your premises are open to the public, you know, if you've got um, a shop or a bricks and mortar store, then you'll want to put the camera somewhere where it's not likely to get stolen, uh, such as the times we live in now. And of course, you won't be able to use it for anything else at the same time. So it might be something you could put your old iPhone to good use and you know, it's a good excuse to get another one. In this video I want to talk about how musicians can use Facebook Live because harnessing the power of Facebook and Facebook Live can really help get your band or get your music noticed. Now of course back in the old days it was very hard to get your band noticed. You had to play in clubs, uh, you had to play at venues and concerts, you might even have to go busking in the street or on the London Underground to get your audience's attention so that they would actually hear your music, so they would know who you were and really get the word out there. And of course, you're at the mercy of um, unscrupulous promoters who might try to rip you off along the way. Then came the internet and the rise of social media sites. And MySpace became particularly popular with musicians. But let's face it, how many people use MySpace anymore? Facebook soon became the de facto place for musicians to find fans. Up and coming bands use it. And even long established acts like the Rolling Stones 
have a presence on Facebook. And Facebook Live really takes this to the next level. Because Facebook Live lets your audience see and hear you. Now, I know that you can do this already with YouTube, but Facebook Live adds an extra live edge to things. And you can use this to build your following or your fan base. You can bring yourself or your band to the attention of record companies, to the attention of um, promoters and to A&R people. And one way that you can do this is to live stream concerts exclusively for your followers. So your followers will get to hear your new song before anybody else. Uh, they'll get to hear your band play special concerts just for them. You know, this is very powerful stuff. You can hold a special private concert for your fans that nobody else, nobody else who isn't following you on Facebook Live is going to be allowed to see. So that's very powerful because it means that uh, you're tying in your audience because you're giving them something special, something that nobody else can have. And you can also hold Q&As, you know, question and answer sessions about your band uh, where people can send you uh, questions and you can answer them live on air. And they can also make comments while uh, you're doing this so they can send you um, questions while uh, the Q&A session is in progress. Or you could play requests. You know, you could get people to message you and ask you to play a particular number and you can simply play that exclusively for the person who's requested it. You know, that, that, that's pretty powerful stuff. And you can stream up to 90 minutes, which is plenty of time, really. So you can really can give your followers really good value there. And of course, this isn't just for people who are singers or people who are in rock or pop bands either. You know, it can fit any type of musical genre. If you're a country western singer or a band, or if you're a jazz musician, or even a classical musician, you know, like a concert pianist or something, you can still use these techniques to reach a wider audience. And even once you're an established band, you know, I'm waiting to see the first Rolling Stones concert over Facebook Live. I'm sure it'll be coming at some point in the future. So there you go, just a few ways that musicians can use Facebook Live. One of the things that Facebook recommend when it comes to Facebook Live is that you should be creative and you should broadcast often. And I'm going to delve a bit deeper into this topic in this video. Now, why should you be creative and broadcast often? Well, I suppose the main reason is to avoid being boring. If you're just going to do the same old presentation time and time again, you're going to drive people away. So you want to make sure that when you're giving your presentations, if you're giving a presentation to camera, it's on a slightly different topic, that you use a slightly different technique, different camera angles, maybe from a different location, that sort of thing. Because as the old saying goes, variety tis the spice of life. So try broadcasting from different locations. Now, obviously, provided that there's a Wi-Fi or a 4G signal, of course. Or you can talk about different topics to do with your niche. You know, you might perhaps give a demonstration uh, of a product if you sell um, a physical product as an affiliate you could actually demonstrate how this works live on air and then you could have the link to buy it uh, in your Facebook page you could perhaps if you're an internet marketer you're in the IM niche you could talk about a particular aspect of internet marketing a different one every time you might be able to do that from a different location provide you've got somebody else to hold the smartphone of course they might watch over your shoulder while you're doing something online 
exactly at that moment that sort of thing so it's going to give people lots of different reasons to tune in because each episode is going to be different and if you think about it if you watch uh, a chat show you know uh, there's all sorts of chat shows in different countries all over the world you'll find that they follow a similar format but they have different interesting people on every time. And that's something that you might also want to do uh, as part of a Facebook live stream is to interview people and have a different person on every time. And you're just going to keep it interesting. It's just going to keep it varied. Something else that you want to do is to broadcast at regular times to build a following. And you want to let people know ahead of time when your broadcast is going out and you want to build anticipation and you want to build referrals because if people watch one broadcast on Facebook Live that you've done they're likely to tell their friends particularly their Facebook friends about it and then you can build your following exponentially because uh, they will tune in and watch and tell their friends and their friends and so on and of course Another reason to broadcast often is that old saying, out of sight, out of mind. People may tune in once out of curiosity just to see who you are and what you're talking about. And perhaps they may have um, got an email from you in the past or they may have bought one of your products, that sort of thing. So they might tune in once just to make sure that you are really a real person and see what you look like and hear what you sound like and that sort of thing. But they'll soon forget about you if you don't keep giving them a reason to come back. So you do need to make sure that you broadcast regularly and that you vary the topics that you broadcast on. And when you give them a regular date for their diary and your videos are entertaining and informative, they'll come back time and time again. And of course, Facebook Live is so new it's launched at the beginning of 2016 so you're practically guaranteed an audience and of course it's unlikely that many marketers in your niche are using it yet so this gives you an edge because you're going to be the go-to guy or go-to girl in your niche that people tune into on Facebook live and this gives you the opportunity to get out in front and to stay there everybody else is going to be playing catch up so you can make sure that you stay ahead of the curve in this video we're going to take a look at some of the types of videos that work well on Facebook live and probably the most successful type of video on Facebook live are how to's now, when you're demonstrating how to do something live in real time, it can be really powerful because lots of people are cynical when it comes to watching how-to videos on sites like YouTube or how-to programs on TV. They know that lots of editing and manipulation goes on behind the scenes and so what you see is not always what you're going to get. There's a very popular program on UK television at the moment where they fix up old cars. And you can just tell that there's a whole lot of stuff that they're not showing you. The, the car always starts first time every time when they fixed it up. And you think to yourself, especially if you've had any experience of doing anything with cars, you know that things never actually work that smoothly, that they probably had to have umpteen different takes and lots of tweaking about to try and get that car to start up after they've uh, installed the new engine. But of course, when you see it on the program, the guy puts the key in the ignition, turns the key, vroom, away it goes. And you know, you can get a bit cynical, so you know that it probably really didn't happen exactly like that. But the thing is, when it's live, they see it being done in real time, and they'll be able to see how easy it really is, or how difficult it really is. You know, you're not pulling any punches when it comes to showing things uh, on Facebook Live. You see exactly what's going on. Now, of course, you'll want to practice a lot beforehand so that everything runs smoothly and you don't end up looking stupid uh, if the engine really doesn't start. But because it's live, because people can actually see it being done 
in real time, it'll give people a lot more confidence in the thing that you're demonstrating, the how-to, because people will see that it is possible to do it. Another type of video that does very well on live streaming on Facebook Live is what's known as the Ask Me Anything video. And this is actually probably the simplest type of video to do because all you've got to do is sit there and answer questions that your viewers submit to you uh, via the app and you simply answer them live on air. And this does several things. First of all, it can boost your credibility and it can show that you really do know what you're talking about because people can send you a question. You can say, you know, here we have a question from such and such. He or she wants to know this, that and the other. And then you can explain and it really does show you as an expert. But of course, you want to make sure that you've boned up on the subject ahead of time, that you can anticipate a bit the sort of questions that people are going to ask you so that you can uh, answer the questions off the cuff and sound really knowledgeable. Another type of video that does well are countdowns. Now, you can build a buzz around your product launch by counting down how many days or hours there are until your product goes live, and you can reveal a different interesting fact every time. And this can be questions that people have submitted about it. You can perhaps build curiosity, show a little bit about your product, perhaps read a bit from your ebook if you're publishing an ebook. Just a little snippet every time just to give people uh, a little bit of information every time that they go and broadcast or, or that you go and broadcast. And you can also reveal that your product is live via a Facebook live stream and perhaps give viewers a discount coupon or a code at the launch that will ensure that the word spreads and that you get more viewers at future launches. And then there are interviews. And again, get people to submit questions via the app and get your guests to answer them live on air. And if you've ever watched uh, chat shows on TV, you'll know that having a different guest to be interviewed every time keeps people coming back because it keeps the content fresh, it keeps it different, it gives people a reason to keep coming back to watch. And of course, this is also a subtle way to do direct selling as your guest can plug his or her product and people can purchase it via your affiliate link. So yeah, there aren't very many ways to do direct selling on Facebook Live at the moment, but this is certainly one way that you can do it. And then there are debates and discussions. You can get lots of different people together. You can start to have a debate and viewers can submit questions via the app and can contribute to the debate just as if they were there, really. So again, that's a very powerful way. It's a very powerful uh, way of getting your message across. And it's something that people tune in and want to see. And these types of videos are actually quite popular. Then there are talks, you know, people talking over lunch, over the breakfast, while they're on the commute. You know, if you're stuck on a train and it's the third time this week that the train's been late, well, you could shout out to your followers on Facebook and say, look, here, I'm stuck on the 815 again. And when are they going to do something about this? You know, commuters like a good old moan occasionally. And you can share your views with the world on any topic. And, you know, some people find the minutiae of other people's lives fascinating. And quite frankly, there's so little on Facebook Live right now that you're practically guaranteed an audience. And then there are Let's Plays for games. And in these sort of videos, you can reveal tactics for playing certain video games. You can show people how to get to the next level. You can share tactics. You can get feedback from other gamers. And you could perhaps have a gaming circle where each participant live streams from their perspective on a certain date and time so that you can really interact with each other as well as with anyone who happens to be watching. And these sorts of videos are always popular. And then there are workouts. And 
If you're in the fitness niche, then this can really be a boon because you're showing people exactly how it's done. And this can really boost your credibility because people can see that you really do know what you're talking about. And it's like having a personal trainer come into people's homes. And of course, as you're doing the workouts, you can get feedback from viewers. You can get questions that you can answer in real time. So it as I said, it does really build and boost your credibility. And of course, you can use it as a teaser for your next fitness video. You can say, you know, I don't have time to demonstrate these other moves, but in my next video, blah, 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 blah. So you can see you can actually use that for sales purposes as well. And cooking and recipes are always popular. You can actually show someone in real time how to cook a particular dish. Uh, you can show them how the ingredients go together. There's no editing, so they'll know that the procedure that you're following is the exact procedure that they need to follow in order to get the same results. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that you can have as well. You can do things like product reviews. They're always very popular because you can actually demonstrate live on air how a particular product works. Then things like life hacks, tutorials, behind the scenes are very popular, especially in the business niche. You can see people at work. If you run a, a store, for example, or a shop, you can have that and people can see exactly what's going on at the time. A day in the life, you can broadcast at different times throughout the day and tell people what you're doing. And quite frankly, just about any subject you can think of is likely to be popular on Facebook Live because it's so new. So although we've covered quite a few in this video, your idea could be the next one that really takes off. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how you can go about organizing a live webinar. Now, a live webinar is like a webinar, but it's held over Facebook Live. Now, the first thing to do is to decide on your topic. And the best way to do that is to simply ask your followers what they want to learn about. And you can do that ahead of time by emailing your list. Uh, you can post something on Facebook and get people to respond. You could perhaps mention it in a previous live stream that you're going to be doing a live webinar and what would you like to know about? And people can submit comments and you can uh, come up with some ideas that way. But one thing that you should do is you want to keep the topic niche. You want to keep it nice and narrow because you don't want to bore your audience. You don't want to drone on for too long. You can talk for up to 90 minutes, but quite frankly, I think you're going to start losing people's attention way before then. So you want to keep the topic niche. And of course, bear in mind that if people have lots of different things that they want to learn about, if your followers have lots of different things they want to learn about, you can do a separate live webinar on each one of those and that gives people a reason to come back and keep following you and keep listening to your live streams or watching your live streams. You also need to pick a time and date that's convenient for your audience. Now bear in mind this is going to be going out live and your audience is going to be in different time zones. Now of course if you're aiming this at people who are all in one country, then that is probably easier than aiming it at a global audience. So for example, if you're in uh, the continental US, you've only got four time zones to worry about. If you're in the UK, you've only got one time zone to worry about. So that, that sort of thing. Whereas if you're going for a global audience, then you've got 24 different time zones to worry about. So you do need to make sure that you are going out at a time that your audience can tune in and watch. And you want to do your homework. You want to research your topic thoroughly. You want to find out all that there is to know about it, because after all, when you're doing a live webinar, you're the expert. If you're doing a live webinar with another person, 
then you'll have to be in the same place at the same time. It's not like if you're doing a webinar where you can be in separate places and you can talk to each other via the internet. Because if you're doing a live webinar, it's going to have to be filmed on your smartphone. So you're going to have to be physically in the same place at the same time. So you can go to them, they can come to you, or you can meet them somewhere and do your live webinar at a place that's convenient for both of you. Whatever you decide to do, you want to hold your live webinar somewhere quiet with a good Wi-Fi or 4G signal. So you want to check out the venue ahead of time if it's not going to be in your home or your office. You want to make sure that if you're going to meet someone somewhere else or you're going to go to their office or their home that there is a good Wi-Fi signal. And you want to make sure that the set looks tidy and that the lighting is done properly because bear in mind that people are going to be looking at the set the whole time that you're on camera so you want to make sure that there's nothing out of place because you don't want anything to distract from you or your guest and the message that you're putting across and the same goes for the lighting because if it looks amateurish then that's going to put people off you want to have the same sort of lighting that people will get if they see you on TV or if they go to the movies. And ideally, what you want to aim for is what's known as Rembrandt lighting. And this is the sort of lighting techniques that Rembrandt used in his pictures. And you can see from his self-portrait here that the way that he's painted it is that the light is stronger on one side of his face than on the other. And that's the sort of technique that you want to reproduce in your videos. And something else you want to do is have an agenda to work through. And this will ensure that you move smoothly through the presentation and you don't miss anything out. So you could have note cards or cue cards or just simply a piece of paper with the uh, schedule written through it, the agenda, so that you know that you're going to be covering this topic first and then that topic and then the other topic and that sort of thing. And of course, you want to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. You want to make sure that your delivery is perfect. You don't want to be hesitating. You don't want a lot of your know, ums and ahs and that sort of thing because it just sounds very unprofessional. So you want to make sure that you at least sound like you know what you're talking about and you look like you know what you're talking about because if you're nervous, if you don't really come across as being confident, then that is going to spoil your presentation. So you want to practice your delivery in the mirror until you're confident about giving a polished performance. So go somewhere private and practice just talking to yourself in the mirror. It feels a bit strange when you first do it, but that is the best way to find out exactly how you're going to come across. Or of course, if you have a video camera, you can video yourself talking to camera and play it back and watch it. But do bear in mind though, that this is gonna be going out live. So any mistakes are not gonna be able to be edited out unlike on video. And then you want to get the word out about your live webinar. And there are lots of different ways that you can do that. On Facebook, of course, you can let your Facebook friends and your followers know that you're going to be holding this live webinar. And you can use other social media as well. Twitter is a good way because you can simply send out a short message to your Twitter followers. And also LinkedIn, if you're aiming at a business niche. You know, lots of people who have a presence on LinkedIn also have a presence on Facebook for their business. So you can work the two together and get the word out that way. Of course, your mailing list is probably the best way to get the word out. Everyone who's subscribed to your newsletter, uh, everyone who's bought a product from you, you want to let them know about your live webinar. And also your blog subscribers. Anyone who's subscribing to your blog, you can put a post in your blog to tell people that you're going to be holding this live webinar and when and give them instructions as to how they can sign up and how they can watch it.
You also want to remind people in the days and hours running up to your live and R that it's going to go ahead and give them the date and the time. And again, because Facebook Live is so new and lots of people won't have heard about it, you'll have to remind people how they can tune in and watch it. Something else as well that you want to have is a Q&A as part of your live and R. You can get people to submit questions to you via the app and you can answer them in real time. And it's a good idea to mention them by name. You know, here we've got a, a question from Fred or here we've got a question from Jane and answer them in real time and quote them. And that can really tie you and the audience together. And people really do like that. Something else that you can do finally is you can record your live and R and you can post the video on uh, your Facebook timeline and you can also post it on YouTube and other video sharing sites. But if you do that, you want to be sure to edit something out and you want to make sure that people know it's been edited out because this will give them an incentive to tune in and watch your next live and R live. So you don't give them everything when they tune in and watch your video off of a site like YouTube. So that will encourage people to actually tune in and follow you on Facebook and watch your next live in art. So there you go. You could very well be one of the first people in your niche to hold a live in art. And I wish you every success. There are lots of ways that you can integrate Facebook Live with other social media, and I'm going to talk about that in this video. I suppose the easiest social media to integrate Facebook Live with is Facebook itself. And Facebook give you some pretty comprehensive instructions on the site as to how you go about doing it. Now, Facebook have some instructions on their help center that show you how you can share live videos. And as they say here, this feature isn't available to everyone right now. And they say that to start a live broadcast, what you have to do is log into the Facebook iOS app or Facebook Android app. Tap the a uh, little icon at the top that looks like a pencil in a square at the top of the timeline, newsfeed or page. Then you tap the other icon that looks like a little man with a halo. And then you can write an optional description for your broadcast. And then you can tap go live to begin your broadcast. When you want to end your broadcast, tap finish. And your broadcast can be no longer than 90 minutes. And when you end your broadcast, it'll stay on your timeline or page like any other video. And it does say that you can block viewers during a live broadcast by tapping on the profile picture next to a customer's comment and then tapping block. And then you can also unblock someone that you've previously blocked. You can also hear, also on the Help Center, they have instructions as to how you can share a live video in an event or group. And again, it says to share a live video, go to that event or group from the Facebook, iOS or Android app. Tap the box that says write something. Tap the icon that looks like the little man with a halo. Write a brief description. Tap go live to start three second countdown to broadcast. And then to stop broadcasting, tap finish at the bottom of the screen. Now, these are the instructions that they have at present. But things change quite rapidly on the internet and this is a brand new app and it is still evolving. So what I recommend is that you go to the Facebook Help Center and do a search where it says, how can we help you for things like how do I share a live video in an event or group or how do I share a live video on Facebook? Just to make sure that these instructions are current, because as I say, they can change from time to time. Now, a note of caution here. There are some restrictions on integrating Facebook Live and your Facebook page. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about them here because things are changing so quickly. 
that by the time you come to see this video, they may have been taken off. Plus, of course, some restrictions vary from country to country. So you do need to play it by ear, really, when it comes to integrating Facebook and Facebook Live and just see what's available in your country. And also take a look on the Facebook website for their notifications about some of the restrictions to Facebook Live because it is so new and it is being rolled out. Another way that you can get the word out about your Facebook Live broadcast is to use Twitter. And you can tweet about forthcoming Facebook Live broadcasts. And this is a way to get the word out about your live broadcasts and about your saved videos. Although do bear in mind that Twitter does own Periscope, so you don't really want to do this too often in case they sort of, you know, rather take umbrage about it and shut your account down. So do be careful when trying to promote Facebook Live via Twitter. But uh, every once in a while, I don't think it could really hurt. And then there's YouTube. And you really can do a great partnership between your Facebook Live broadcast and YouTube. What you can do is save it to your camera roll when you're recording your video. And you can edit the video to make it more polished and more professional. Then you upload it to YouTube and your followers will be notified. And what you can do is include a link to your Facebook page in the description. And then people will know where you are. They'll know that you are on Facebook Live and they can be notified when your next live broadcast goes out. So you can work the two together very, very easily. And of course, Probably the best way to integrate Facebook Live with other media is with your own blog or your own website. So you can give details of your next or previous live broadcasts. You can link to saved videos that are part of your Facebook timeline. And you can embed videos that you've saved to YouTube and people can go and watch them and then they'll know, like I was just saying, what your Facebook Live link is and they'll know how to sign up and watch your next videos live. So you can use your YouTube videos as a trailer to get people to watch your next Facebook Live sessions. So there you go, just some ways that you can integrate Facebook Live and other media. Solving Facebook Advertising Enigma Hey guys, in this particular video, we're going to be diving inside Facebook advertisement, so I need you to focus totally. This is one of the most important Facebook advertisement videos to ever come across in your online marketing career. So, if you want to do some other stuff like playing the mobile phone or checking your husband or wife, do stop that now. What I want you to do is grab a pen and paper and have 100% focus inside this video. Let us see the reasons and benefits of using Facebook advertisements. Facebook ads are used to increase your fan base, as already discussed, to promote your events like a marketing event, a launch, or whatever, for your brand exposure, especially for promoting a product or particular corporate, selling a product or services with external pages, also for targeted lead generations. Now, here are some Facebook advertisement tips. These are some generic tips which apply for any kind of Facebook advertisements. Tip number one, research Facebook interest. This is very important. Once you create an ad, Facebook helps you to research interest areas of your target market. This is similar to finding targeted keywords but the advantage here is that Facebook do suggest you related interests. Always target bigger reach in order to minimize your Facebook advertisement cost. So the rule is that the more reach you have, the less you pay for your Facebook advertisement, which you'll see in the later video once you set up a live campaign. Tip number two. In case of running a page like or promote your page advertisement, use click like if you love phrase. This is very similar to promoting any particular marketing or your own brand page. If you want people to like your page, being creative is unnecessary. Just use a simple phrase like, click like if you love pit bulls, or click like if you love making money online. As simple as that. Let's go ahead. Tip number three, 
use ad images that pop. This is very important. I'm sure you have seen Facebook advertisements on the right side of your Facebook page or also in your news feeds. The first impression is the most important impression as a prospect, so the image must pop out. Use borders, headshots, and the lesser text, the better it is for you. Tip number four model after the ads you like. I used to do when I started in Facebook marketing the good advertisement, all the pictures, all the good contain all the headline which is you to see. I always keep to see be ready all the same so you can once you do your advertisement, if you follow 100 to 100 advertisement, and if you know to stop nurturing those ads in your mind. Now, once you set up your own advertisements, they always appear in your mind and you can set it or model your advertisement after them or you can go to a library and always search or look after those ads and kind of set it after that. Anya Kanu? Tip number five, test small. Now remember, once you set up a Facebook advertisement, even if how ninja you are or how cool you are as a marketer, you need to test the advertisement. This is because you're going to have a different target market, different spinner, different image. So always test small. Start with a budget of $5 per day because it will do less and it's cheap. The more money you give, the more Facebook consumes. So if you give Facebook $500 a day, it just spends and consumes all of it in one day and just giving you a higher reach. But once you give them lesser amount of money, Facebook will be very choosy in showing your ad to people. You can also test five or six different kind of images with different kind of texts and headlines to see which one is performing better. Next is tip number six. Pause losers, scale winners. If you run five to six ads simultaneously, test them and see which ones are performing well and the ones that are not. Pause the ones which are not doing well or tweak them and always scale up the winners. You can go up to $20 to $50 per day if they are doing good and if they are giving a good ROI to you. Now, as I told you, when you create an image, always have a clear headshot and try to have a border to make the image pop out. Here's an example which I did for one of my products. So you can see a nice image with very little text. Then I have a nice border over here so it kind of pops out once the ad runs. Here's the thing, if you are a marketer who is just getting started and all excited, always be honest in Facebook advertisement because marketing is all about honesty and sincerity. It is not about faking things. So if you're using an image or a headshot, use your own image because two things are going to happen. Number one, you're going to build the trust factor because when someone clicks the image and Googles your sales page and sees your video, they would immediately think, oh my God, this person is the real deal. He is a real person. Number two, it is also building a brand image. Select a picture that can give a story, which can give an impact to your audience. Trust is also built up between you and your audience. Try to give pictures which are showing your happiness, laughter, or enjoyment. No one likes to see a grumpy face because who wants that? So try to give pictures which kind of show a positive attitude and creates a positive resonance. I believe you got the idea, guys. Moving forward, let's discuss the three different kinds of Facebook advertisements. Number one, promoted post ads or boost post ads. Number two, promote your page ad or page like advertisement. And number three, send people to your website ad or which was previously known as the external pages ad. First, the promoted post ad is a very, very focused strategy. It is used to promote a status update on your wall or turning that status into an actual ad. Once you see a particular post doing well, getting likes, comments, and getting a viral effect, you can of course promote that particular post to get more likes and exposure. Your brand image will also get built up. Plus, what happens once you promote a boost post ad? It secretly puts some kind of link for your sales or capture page. It automatically includes the like, share, and comment buttons, which is nice. And the best part is, it's super duper easy to set up. 
If you have never done any Facebook advertisement before, or you feel kind of scared, try this, guys. It doesn't require any kind of copywriting skills. Nothing is really required. Just follow the steps, and you can be setting up your first Facebook Boost Post ad. Let me quickly go inside one of my fan pages, and let me show you how to do that. So here, you can choose a post you want to boost. Just click the Boost button over here. Then, Facebook will ask you what type of audience you want your post to be shown. This is great, especially if you have a small number of fans. So what I can do is select an audience here to reach a bigger number of people who can see this ad. You can also edit the location. Once I do that, we can immediately see that my reach has increased. If you are someone who is just getting started and still doesn't have any kind of likes in your Facebook fan page, you can also select people you choose through targeting. In here, you can edit your audience so you can target specific people. You can add the countries you like here, what age range, their gender, and interests. You can see that Facebook automatically gives suggestions while you are typing. Then click Save, and that's how easy it is. So here's the recap. You can either select the people who like my page or the people who like your page and their friends. You can also choose the duration of the ad and your payment method and all the good stuff. Then they will show you how your ad is going to appear both in the desktop and mobile news feed. The like, comment, and share button is going to appear below it too. I believe that this is enough to give you the understanding about boost post ads and how they are going to work for you. So guys, nothing difficult over here. Just try to do your fast boost post ads and send a testimonial of yours. You're ready for that. I believe you are now really, really enjoying this topic, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, this is one of the most innovative and cutting edge marketing tools which has come across Facebook. It is known as Facebook retargeting or Facebook remarketing. Let's dive into it and let's look at what it's all about. Retargeting simply means the action of remarketing or re engaging your visitors or traffic with highly targeted ads based on their recent interaction with your product or service when they leave your website without buying or without taking any desired action, like entering an email ID or those similar stuff from you. In simple terms, Facebook retargeting is targeting those visitors or traffic and potential customers who have shown some interest in your product or service by using the Facebook advertising platform. Now, whenever we give any advertisement there, not more than 2% of the visitors will buy from you in the first interaction. What's more important is that not more than 30 to 35% of the visitors will enter their email ID, their name, or details, which means that potentially, you are losing 98% of people who are leaving your website without buying, or the rest, 60 to 65% of people, are not even entering their email ID. So you are losing the chance to interact with them in the future. But guess what? Those people have already shown interest in your product, and as we all know, it takes at least three to four exposures before you start selling your products, before you're getting that mind share into your customer's mind. So, with retargeting, you are actually targeting those potential customers who have already shown interest into your product or services. You are already 10% better than your competition. That's the reason why Facebook remarketing has become a big phenomena in the recent times. Why? Because this gives you the power to remarket or retarget those precise customers, those target audience who has already shown interest into your product or services. And once you market to them, of course, your conversions are skyrocketing. Your low conversions are of proportions, and that is why this is so important nowadays, and why people, especially marketers, are going crazy about this particular technique of marketing. Let's look at a graphical presentation. A visitor, which is this particular lady, number one, comes to your website. They learn about your product, but leaves without purchasing. It might be because the bell has rung, or the dog is barking, or the child is crying. Not necessarily that they want to leave, but inevitable situations happen sometimes, and they just get defocused to do something else. Now what happens to Facebook remarketing? Facebook displays your ads to those specific users 
who left your website, bringing them back to buy. The cool part of that, they don't have to stay into that particular offer for a few seconds or a few minutes. Even if they just stay for a nanosecond, which is a fraction of a second, still they are hooked inside Facebook Remarket too, and that's absolutely cool. Now, here are some facts about Facebook retargeting. Why do we want it so bad? Why are people going mad about it? Why do we have to have a complete module on Facebook retargeting? And why should you absolutely master it as a marketer? Once you do that, you can be a champ at this. Number one, it increases your brand awareness by positioning your brand on top of prospects' minds almost like magic. The data shows that 43% of companies use retargeting for brand building. Do you think they're fools for doing studies on their market and on their competitors? That's why the corporates use retargeting or remarketing for brand building. Number two, it converts visitors who leave your website and never came back. As I told you in the beginning, 98% of visitors leave your website without taking any action. New visitors take at least two to four exposures before they actually make a purchase. So, retarget marketing not only helps you to get into the mind share of your target customer, but with repeated exposure of your product to the target market, to the interested customers, you actually get it to correct it. Number three. 11% of brands use retargeting to hijack their competitors' traffic and sales. And that's Ninja as a marketer. And guess what? You and your competition do have a similar type of advertisement, right? But because you do retargeting, which has crazy little techniques, you can be hijacking your competition's traffic. You can also be hijacking sales from your competition, and they don't have any single clue how do they lose customers. Number four. 57% of Facebook retargeted emails get opened and clicked, thus leading to sales. Of course, when people click on your advertisement, when they click on your emails, obviously they do buy and you make sales. Number five, two out of five leading marketers in the industry have dedicated budget every month for retargeting and use this strategy aggressively. I'm talking about elite marketers, so they maybe are the top 1%. These are the people who understand conversions, leads, and sales. They understand about the cutting-edge technology, and they have the mechanism or software to analyze their conversions. Without these guys, you cannot start and have this business, because you have to grow with the time. You have to understand what's new and what's happening now, not what used to happen five years back, but what's happening now. Let me give you some real examples using my Facebook. Now, I visited one advertisement here. So, once I visited this website, I stayed for some time, but for some reasons, I did not purchase from them. Once I came back, immediately they tried to get me back into their website. Another example is this. This page is used to build sales page or squeeze pages. And the moment I came back, I could see that I'm being tracked inside one of their pages. How cool is that? So now, you might be thinking, yes, this happened to me and you have the aha moment. Imagine, once you do these things in your business, whether you are promoting your own product or services, affiliate offers, or network marketing, whatever you are promoting, once you master these things, imagine how effectively you can build your business, how many more sales, conversions, and leads you can get. Because you are retargeting or remarketing to the exact audience who has already shown interest into your product or services, you could build your brand getting conversions and leads and making sales like crazy. Since this is remarketing, it is super duper cheap. You could be getting a click for four to five cents. I mean, five cents, how cool is that? Why is it cheap? Because you are already marketing to a small target market or audience. So with retargeting, you not only get to convert your offers, increase your sales, get more leads, which you are losing, but this is also one of the cheapest ways to advertise your business. On the next video, I will do something good for you, and you will love me for that. I'll be making a video where I'll show you the exact steps and an exact case study of how I am creating a Facebook retarget marketing, and you can pretty much copy the same. There is no more available in the market, and the marketers who know this will never ever share it to you, and that's for sure. So thank you so much, guys. I have tons of fun making this particular video as always. See you in the next video.
Creating Customized Facebook Images In this module, we'll learn how to create customized Facebook images. This image, which you can see on your screen, is our example. Imagine if you can create this sort of branded images on a daily basis. How cool is that? Now once you start creating this kind of Facebook post, and you start updating your fan page on a daily basis, or your personal account with these kinds of posts, you'll stand out as a marketer. Not only that, you can also start attracting a lot of people because people see you as someone who is different in a positive way. In these images, you can put famous quotes or some kind of daily tips. And also, if you're smart enough, you can slip your Facebook fan page, your website, and your company details, like website URL, just to attract people towards your opportunity. Outsourcing someone to create these kind of images could easily cost you $5 to $15. But today, I'll show you how to create these kind of images free of cost. We're going to use www.canva.com. And you'll be able to create beautiful images very easily. Now, let me quickly jump in Canva and show you. Once you click on Canva, you'll see an area which says Create a Design. And under that, simply select Facebook Post. Once you do, you'll be taken inside the back office of Canva. And you'll see a lot of designs at the left side of the screen already done for you, just needing a little bit of customization on your part. The cool thing is, the size of this image is already optimized for Facebook, so no need to worry about changing anything there. Now, let me show you this example, because I love this particular picture. Once the picture loads, you just have to click over the area you want to change. In this example, let's start with the text. Let's say I want to use this image for a course called Facebook Enigma. Let me just type Facebook Enigma over here. In your case, you could be putting some quotes or quick tips here. Then, if you want to change this portion over here, just move the cursor over here and type the content you want. If you want to add a website URL, just click over the text area you want to put it, and then edit. You can customize the font, the color, and the size as well. Use these options to make your graphic elements stand out. You can also change the background by selecting the background pane at the left side of the screen. You can choose from free and paid options. Also, you can adjust the angles of the elements present in your image by clicking on it. Then click over the counterclockwise arrow below the element, which says Rotate this element, and simply hold and rotate. Once you're happy with your design, you're now ready to download it. Simply go over at the upper right hand of the screen and click on Download. You can either choose JPG or PNG format. Both work, so you can choose any of the two. And all you have to do next is upload that image to your Facebook account or fan page. Do this on a daily basis, and you'd be filling your Facebook account with high-quality, cool posts very easily. Canva even allows you to create your Facebook cover page. And again, it's point-and-click simple. You can even charge people for Facebook graphic services. I believe that this particular tool is going to be very, very helpful for you to brand yourself on Facebook, have daily updates, and all this cool stuff. It'll mean that you can also save a lot of money, right? So thank you for watching this video. Enjoy this stuff, implement, and see you on the next module. Hi, my friend. How are you doing? I hope you're having fun. In this particular module, we're going to show you how to set up your Facebook fan page. First of all, let's look at the reason why we need a Facebook fan page. If you look at any business or any marketer or any individual in the last two to four years, everybody, I mean everybody but none, has a Facebook fan page. There's something inside a Facebook fan page. That's why everybody has one. Let's look at the reasons and let's dissect them one by one. A personal Facebook account is completely different from a Facebook fan page. Facebook has made a personal account for the social interaction, to post your updates, to connect to your friends and colleagues and say hi to them or post comments in the pictures. But some people do use that aggressively 
to build their business, which is a complete no-no in the books of Facebook. So, Facebook has given us the option of creating a fan page. This is to expand your brand, create your brand avenues, sell your products, and communicate to your clients. You can be in any niche like music, baking, internet marketing, or even dog training. You can have a fan page and build your business. As I told you, a fan page helps you to brand yourself and get your instant authority online. You can also get unlimited reach to interact with. As mentioned earlier, a personal page has only 5,000 friends limitation, but inside a fan page, you can have millions of people who can like and subscribe to your page. Interaction with people sharing the same passion will decide to like your page. When someone likes your page, for example, I liked your page, it means that I give you the confirmation that I am officially your fan inside Facebook. It means that I want to get updates and I want to learn from you. And guess what? Once you have your fan page ready, you can provide value to them, mentor and teach them. You can lead these targeted people because they are from that exact target niche. A fan base of people making money online is pretty different from a fan base of a music community like guitarists, for example. So the first thing you have to understand is a fan base or a Facebook fan page helps us target our niche market and have our followers go there. You can build any sort of business using Facebook fan page, and that's really important. The reach of Facebook gets so much wide, and with the growing popularity of Facebook, everybody is hooked with their laptops, tablets, and smartphones. You can be in any business promoting your own products. You can be a party coordinator, a real estate company, or an online marketing company. You can have a Facebook fan page to promote your business. Why? Because Facebook targets people's interests and their behavioral activities. That's why you can get tons or hundreds and millions of them inside Facebook. So it's easier for you to target them and build a great business. Let's look at a few more basics about Facebook fan page. If you want to create a Facebook fan page, you can just go to facebook.com slash pages slash create. Also, instead of trying to keep up with changes in Facebook cover and timeline photos by searching the internet, check out this page that always has the latest sizes, www.facebook.com slash cover photo size. This is for you to know the appropriate sizes or dimensions for your profile and cover photos. Another thing is, the text inside your cover photo should not exceed 20% of the text-to-image ratio requirements. You can go to www.socialcontest.com slash check image. So, let's jump inside our sample fan page. Let's look at the details. Once you are inside the fan page, you can see the cover photo and the profile picture. Then you can see a share button to share any kind of updates or stuff. Over here, you can write a little bit of introduction about yourself so they can see what this page is all about and they can get attracted. Also, you can put your website for them to access it right away. On Facebook also, there's an option which is to have your customized link or customized go-to link. So, when somebody visits your Facebook account and they click over here, what happens? They can directly go inside your page or blog or website, whichever you want to promote. So without you spending a single dime, you can promote your page or your affiliate product or whatever you want. Also, as an advanced marketer, you can have Facebook apps which will be seen on the next videos. This is to engage people so you can get leads and make sales. You can see some of the updates too, which you do to talk to your people. This is to teach and mentor and all that good stuff. As I told you on this particular module, it is all about teaching you by just holding your hand step by step. So, let's do one thing. Let's create a page together so you can understand the basics and you can model this after me. Just click Create Page. Once you do that, you will be sent to this particular page. First of all, they will ask what kind of niche do you belong to. So choose what best applies for you. For example, I want to create a page for Social Media Mastery. I'll choose cause or community. Once you've selected that, write the name of your Facebook fan page. 
Then, click Get Started button after that. After a few seconds, they will verify your account. Next is the setting up of your page. First, you'll have to write a short description of what your page is about. Let's write Helping Online Marketers to Become Social Media Marketing Experts. You can also put your website. I'll use www.retargeterprofitmaximizer.com. Then they'll ask you to choose a unique Facebook web address to make it easier for people to find your page. This is important. Once you make a page, people should be able to find you easily. If I make a page about social media mastery and people search this particular name, they would instantly understand that this page is about some kind of social media training or the like. Once you have done that, click Save Info. Next, put your profile picture. Then, click Save Photo. Then, Add to Favorites. This means once you add the page to Favorites, you can access it from your personal account directly. Then it will ask you to give your preferred page audience. Facebook is asking you now what kind of organic audience you want for your page. This is one of the most important steps once you start creating your Facebook fan page. Depending on what kind of niche you are building, for example, Pitbull Lovers page, is completely different from online marketing or social media mastery page. So I just keep locations and all these blank for now. On interest, let's write online marketing, online traffic or internet traffic, social media. Since I am building a social media page, I'm trying to search for topics like Twitter marketing, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Instagram. So we got the kind of ideas that we're looking for. Then you click Save. It will show you that your account has been verified and will take you inside your new page. You can already upload your cover photo and profile picture here. You can outsource or create your pictures through canva.com like what we did in the last video. Also, you can create your call to action. Remember, in the beginning of this video, I showed you how to create a call to action for your fans or people who support your page. They can go directly to your fan page and can be one of your leads or subscribers. Or you can sell a product. We have done these basic things, so I believe by now you've got an idea on how you can create a page inside Facebook and what the important elements are. If you haven't made a Facebook fan page for yourself, get it done now. Watch this video again and get your fan page done. Let's do it, guys. It was nice making this video for you, and I believe that you're excited by now. And this is going to become better and better as we proceed. So guys, I'll see you in the next video. In this video, we're going to see how to create or how to use Facebook apps or Facebook applications for generating targeted leads and sales. This is a bit more advanced topic. And if you're someone who is just starting off as a Facebook marketer, do watch this video very, very closely. And if you were to watch it twice, you should be good to go. So let's get started. The Facebook applications are one of the ninja tools to get noticed and generate leads and sales in return. You can create a maximum of 10 applications like these for your blogs, YouTube channels, business opportunities you promote, or affiliate products you want to sell. The cool thing is that Facebook applications are not being used by many marketers. Either they do not have any idea how to work with them, or even if they have, they're not using it effectively. But once you know how to use them for your business, you will be generating targeted leads and sales for completely free of cost for which your fellow marketers will be spending thousands of dollars. So how cool is that? So let's quickly jump inside our sample Facebook fan page and show you how this looks like. So let me scroll it down so you can see this app section. So, when someone clicks over here, they are directed to the CAPTCHA or sales page. You can have a maximum of 10 apps like these about your affiliate offers, business opportunities, or any kind of social media like YouTube and blogs, all these kinds of stuff. The cool thing is that once you have the application set up like this, this never looks like you're selling. This looks like some values, so people come over here to the page, and they automatically click over here, and they enter into your funnel. To create an application, you have to come to your personal Facebook page. 
because you cannot create an app from your fan page. This is very simple. Just go to the search area and type WooBox Custom Tab. Just click on this and you'll be taken directly to this particular page. You have to click on the Install Page Tab button. Once you do so, WooBox will ask you which Facebook fan page you want to install this tab. You have to select your page and click Add Page Tab. That's it. Now, for the demonstration purposes, I've created a demo tab account just to show you the demonstration on how to get started with this. So, first, let's log in to a sample fan page to show you how to set up your first app inside your Facebook fan page. When you scroll down, you can see this particular section on the left which says Apps. As an admin of this page, I'll click on this, and once you do so, you will be taken to this page where you need to click the Configure Page Tab button. Once I click on that button, they will log me out of Facebook. Then, they will take me inside WooBox, which is the application through which we're going to set up this app. Click the Switch button, and I'll switch to my personal account once again. So I'm inside WooBox now. You can see the back office of WooBox. Here, I can just easily start to set up my application. Let's set up the URL here, and once you're done, click on Save Settings. Every step inside WooBox should always be saved in Settings, so that your steps are saved automatically one by one. Next, I select the Redirect, where I want to redirect my fans once they click on this tab. Then I click on Save Settings. Let me show you the basics first, and then I'll show you some advanced stuff, which we can do with this. Click on Image, then select Image. I'll just select an image of which I've created for this application. So my image has been selected. After that, click on Save Settings again. Then you can see an option over here, which is called Fan Gate Settings. There are three gate types. When you choose Off, all your visitors will see your page content automatically. The other option is the Subscribe Gate where visitors will have to join your subscribers list using their name and email address to view your page content. The last choice is the optional like gate, where visitors will be asked if they want to like your page before viewing your page content. Facebook policy no longer allows requiring a user like your page, so just choose the option that you think works for you. Next, I'll go to the tab settings and write Instant Cash Machine. This is the name of the app of which I want to give. Now, if I click on View Facebook tab, it will automatically take me inside my Facebook fan page where I have created this particular application. Just for the demonstration purpose, we can see that the app has been created now. The pictures and the good stuff will appear. So, whenever someone comes over here and clicks this particular application, they will be directly taken into the sales funnel, or into the CAPTCHA page, or into the YouTube page or the blog which you want to promote as a marketer. So you can see guys how easy this is to set up these applications for your Facebook fan page. Now a recap. First you should go to WooBox, install the application for free, then set up the page for your apps. Second, go to the back office of WooBox and select the URL where you want your people to go once they click on the app. Also, choose an image for your application like what we did in our sample account. And also, never ever forget to save your settings once you are done working with this. I believe that these steps are super duper easy for you to kind of model because this is as simple as it might get. Let me show you how this application looks like once you have set this up inside this account. You've seen the entire process, and here you can already see the application. This is looking cool, and this is running. Now, if someone clicks over here, it will go to the desired URL, which I have just created inside this particular application. It is a very easy guide to set up this sort of apps. There's no difficulty whatsoever. But if you are stuck, just watch the video once again, and you should be good to go. I believe you understood how you could create these applications. So nice sharing this topic. This is a ninja technique. Use this stuff 
and set up applications for your account, and you will become like a Facebook ninja in no time. I'll see you next time. Bridge Marketing and FB Chat, Part 1 Welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss the connecting step from the diagram I've shown you in the first video. Now, we will connect to our target market, audience, or prospects by using the technique known as bridge marketing. Bridge marketing is a very simple technique. It's all about customizing your offer for your target market. In other words, you and your offers are on the other side and your prospects are on the other. The bridge is an effective way to convey your message to the target market. In other words, the more effective your pitch is, the more successful you will be in marketing activities. Now, this is a very simple picture of a bridge where two people are standing on both sides. You can see that one person has a plank and he's trying to complete the bridge with it so that the connection can be complete and be more effective. It's similar when it comes to physical marketing or any marketing for that matter. The more effective is your bridge, the more effective you can convey your message to the target market, the more fruitful your marketing efforts will be. I hope it makes sense to you. If not, it'll make sense in the next portion because I will show you some case studies. Now, in case study number one, say you are approaching a stay-at-home mom about some make money online system. Now, you can take two different approaches. If you remember, your target prospect is a stay-at-home mom, so the chance is higher that she doesn't have the technical knowledge or any kind of broad experience about making money online. A simple example is you are making a simple check to that stay-at-home mom and you've asked her how to rank your blog almost instantly, generating you tons of traffic targeted leads and sales on complete autopilot. You will teach them all the things. Now, what do you think? What is going to be the outcome? Does it going to have any sense to her? So this is approach number one. On the other hand, here is approach number two. We have the same prospect, but we approached her in a different manner. You ask the lady, discover how a complete tech challenged, a stay-at-home mom of two kids makes some money online spending less than 30 minutes every day. So what do you think? What is going to be the more effective pitch? In the first case, we have some technical words, which probably is not going to make any sense to the stay-at-home mom, because she doesn't have any idea about traffic or blogs. It'll just sound alien to her. On the other hand, if you talk to her about how a complete tech-challenged stay-at-home mom of two kids, this is going to connect to her at once. She probably thinks that, I have one kid, and someone with two kids is making money online. Then, she reads this particular portion that says, spending less than 30 minutes every day, which even a stay-at-home mom can spin after all the household chores have been done. What have we done here? We've completed a bridge. We have customized our message to convey it directly to our target market by creating this particular bridge. Let's take another example, which is our case number two. Now, say for example, you are approaching a network marketer. The first approach is that my company had the best product and comp plan in the entire industry, versus I help network marketers capture more leads and recruit more reps for their business by using simple Facebook techniques. In the full scale, we have given the network marketer the best image which thousands of others are also claiming all the time. All of them are saying that they have the best product and best comp plan, blah, blah, blah. But on the other hand, if they have taken a bridge approach where they will be helping the person to generate more leads and recruit more reps for his business, who doesn't want to get more people for their business or to get more of what he wants? And it uses simple Facebook techniques. So again, you are creating a bridge, directing them to their own niche or industry. It can immediately connect with the person. So, with these two case studies, I'm trying to make you understand how effectively you can create a bridge to convey the message, and more importantly, to connect to your target market. After connecting with people, you can always take an AEIOU approach. On the first portion, we gave some examples by case study 
by creating a customized bridge marketing messages to create the bridge. But, along with the bridge marketing tips, you can always use the AEIOU approach. Once you have connected with the person, always first use A, which is ask them. Ask them about their biz op and the type of business they are in. Now, the moment you start the conversation asking about his or her business, obviously the person will feel much more connected with you. Everybody wants to talk about their business because that's what interests them. They are your targeted prospects. And then E is for explore. You ask more about the business, their products, the comp plan, and even their success stories. When you do this, they'll feel that you are pinned to listen to their business opportunity, which is also about themselves. I is feel and show that you are interested. You can do this by asking more questions that are just connected or about their business. Then O means offer or opportunity. Now, whenever the right time appears, you've put your bait and your hook out, and then just slip in your offer. Offer your opportunity as a solution to their problem. This is similar to what I always do once I talk to a network marketer for XYZ company. First I ask, followed by explore, then show interest. Then tell them, hey Hank, two months back a guy connected with me via Facebook. He's from a similar company as yours. He has some vitamin deals, and in 60 days I actually helped this guy to recruit 15 reps for his business. And guess what? This month, he is one of the top honors of his company. What happens once you do this? Number one, the person felt connected to you. Number two, when you provide a solution to his problem, he will obviously be open to the opportunity. And then, the final portion will appear, which is the you. This means yourself. Once you offer an opportunity to a person, it always leads your business through you. In our industry, we use the Facebook chat recipe method. This is a free method to generate leads and sales. Everybody wants to join a person. Nobody wants to join a company first, or a product, or a comp plan. People join people. If you are in a particular niche of affiliate sales, network marketing, or some kind of MLM business, you're promoting something. Now, you lead your business through you. So, how are you going to help a person? By delivering the product to that particular person as a person or leader. So I believe that that just makes sense to you. Which brings us to one of the ninja passes which I'm going to show you live. It's called the Edge Ranking Mechanism. To show that, let me go directly to my Facebook account so I can do it live. Now, I'm inside my Facebook page. This is a very, very secret technique that we use, and once you master this simple trick, you can recruit 10 to 15 people per month for your business. Let's get started. First, let's choose a random friend of mine just for this demonstration. So, I'll choose this particular person. Let's go inside his Facebook by just clicking his name or picture, just like that. When you are there, simply go here where it says Friends. As you can see, there are already options showing even without clicking it yet. So, let's click on Close Friends. Once I do that, you can see that the check symbol has been converted into a star. What will happen with this ninja trick? This is super awesome, guys. Facebook will now recognize both of us as close friends. So what? All the updates or posts that I put on Facebook will appear on the top position of that person's news feed all the time. So whenever he logs into Facebook, he can always see my posts first in his news feed. And it happens because we made him as my close friend. This particular thing is so much powerful because we are not approaching that person directly. We're not saying to the guy, hey, come over here, check out my link, or the like. In this scenario, we have used attraction marketing in a sophisticated manner. On the other hand, I can also see his posts at the top of my news feed. So imagine if you do this to 100 people. Your updates are going to be seen at the top of those hundreds of people's news feeds. It's like having hundreds of tons of traders in your email list. So what's going to happen if you put real value-oriented updates in your Facebook? They will see it once or twice, and there's going to be a chance that they are going to check it out. 
Instead of you approaching the person directly through the use of Facebook, you can just do this simple ninja trick and you can already give value or interest through your posts. And guess what? You can easily start connecting with the person and start recruiting. This is the special trick which I've used to recruit hundreds of people through Facebook and this is complete ninja. And I believe you will really love this stuff when you start applying it. I have tons of fun making this video and I hope you enjoy it too and I'll see you in the next video. Infinite Facebook subscribers and followers for free. This particular video can be the most important video in your Facebook marketing career slash online marketing career so far. Because I'm going to be sharing so much value in this video that this video can bring a complete shift in the way you do your marketing. Now this video is about having infinite Facebook subscribers and followers for free. And the best part is, this doesn't cost you a dime on Facebook. You can do this for free of cost. So, let's get started. Have you ever seen people with thousands of subscribers on Facebook? When you go to their Facebook profile, you'll see thousands of followers. And often you wonder how to get thousands of people to subscribe to you on Facebook. Because you might not be someone who has an authority, or who has big product launches where everyone adores you. We do not need to have all those things. But you can have that massive number of subscribers and followers for free just by following this video. Well, it's actually easier than you think. Now, the first thing that you need to ask yourself is why it is so important to have subscribers and followers inside your Facebook account and why every big marketer out there has so many followers. What is the advantage? Because it is free advertising. When we subscribe to you, your post shows in the news feed organically, and you don't pay a dime for this. When someone subscribes to you on Facebook, your posts, pictures, or any type of updates show at the top of their news feed, so it's there in front of their eyes when they log in on Facebook. In turn, you get bigger reach and more exposure. Also, a subscriber on Facebook is similar to an email opt-in. They are like your email subscribers. You'll send them an email, and once they log inside their Gmail or their Yahoo Mail, they can see your email and they can peek or read whatever you have sent them. Similarly, a Facebook subscriber can also see your updates once they log in. The difference between an email and Facebook is that Facebook is a type of social media. So when they receive an email from you, they are already thinking it might be some kind of opportunity or an affiliate offer. While on Facebook, when you have an update, they think that it is some kind of new and interesting information. People read the updates and information or check the photo if there is. It happens naturally since a lot of people are hooked to social medias, especially Facebook nowadays. So I guess you can already get what I'm trying to derive. Now. Imagine how much it will cost you to get a thousand email subscribers. Probably one thousand dollars, if not more. But you can get one thousand subscribers on Facebook for free. How cool is that? Now, how do you do that? How can we get thousands of subscribers in our Facebook accounts? I will give you the tricks for that. Trick number one Tell people to subscribe to your news feed. Very simple. Tell people to subscribe to you immediately after they've accepted your friend request or vice versa. When you send somebody a request or somebody sends friend request, you can use this particular screenshot which I've also given in the PDF report. You have to tell them to go to your account, go to the friend button and just click on the get notifications button. But usually that is already automatic once you are friends. So they can just click on the following button and change it to see first so they can see your posts at the top of the news feed every time you have an update or post. Trick number two, max out 5,000 friends. After you max out 5,000 friends, Facebook automatically converts people into followers. How cool is that? Trick number three, ask people to subscribe inside your email broadcasts. In case you have an email list and you send a broadcast or follow-ups, just insert a link over there so that they can subscribe to your Facebook account directly.
because they have subscribed to you in the email, chances are they like to get updates from Facebook too. Trick number four, subscribe through blog and website. If you have a blog or a website, you can directly upload a subscribe button there. So if they visit that page, they can directly click it and subscribe to you on Facebook. To know more about that, I put the link on the PDF file, so just get it and you can get started. It's very easy. And lastly, I'd like to show you something on Facebook to get you started with your followers. So, we're here on my Facebook account right now. First, you have to click on the upper rightmost button, which looks like an arrow pointing down. When you're there, click on Help. After clicking that, type in Desktop Help in the box provided. You can see some guide questions which are related with what you've typed. So, let's just click on See More for Desktop Help. You're going to be led to this page. The next step is to click Connecting and Follow after that. On this page, you can see the basic things like the meaning of follow on Facebook. You can also see how to get started, how to follow public updates, and how to manage your followers. You just click on the basic questions there to read the answers. So, I believe that you have learned a lot of tricks to increase your subscribers and followers on Facebook for free. I also hope that you understood the effectiveness of having a big number of followers. These techniques are absolutely awesome, so apply them all to put your business to the next level. Thank you so much guys, and I'll see you in the next video. How to Market Your Business on Facebook Hello and welcome inside this Facebook marketing course. We are super excited to have you here with us. First of all, thank you very much for investing in this course. Let me assure you that this is going to be the best investment that you have done so far in your Facebook marketing career. Now, without further ado, let's jump straight inside the course. In this particular chapter, we're going to talk about how to market your business on Facebook. Before we get started, let me ask you two things. Do you have a Facebook account? And do you know how to use your Facebook account? Because these are the two things that you will need to make money on Facebook starting today, and I assure you that. So, before we jump into the advanced topic, let's first talk about the basic background and information about Facebook. Why is that important? It's important because once you know a little bit about Facebook, you should be able to align yourself better with Facebook as a marketer. Now, let's get started and show you some facts and figures about Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg, as you know, started Facebook, along with his college roommates at Harvard University back in February 2004. Facebook is currently valued at $104 billion. Now, I'm sure that by the time you're listening to this, that billion dollars is going to blow into more for sure. Facebook was called Face Mash and for legal problems changed to Facebook. It started trading in NASDAQ in 2012. Facebook has 1.3 billion active monthly users. It would be the third largest country in the world if you think of Facebook as a country. Five new profiles are created every second and half a million comments are posted every minute. There are 680 million mobile Facebook users. Especially with the advancement of mobile apps and technology, people are accessing Facebook more and more through their mobile phones. Facebook's user base is growing at 22%, which is again a huge number. 48% of users log in every single day. Now, imagine this as a marketer. You have a community of users where 50% are logging in every single day. If you compare this with emails or email opens, that's not even 10%. So we have the community where people are logging in on a daily basis. So you have your target market up and running. A person who logs in on Facebook stays for 18 minutes. And 72 million links are being shared every single day, which is again, Mind-boggling. 51% of fans are more likely to purchase from brands they like on Facebook, so you better make sure many people like your business on Facebook. Now, my question to you is, 
Let's say you're a network marketer, an online marketer, or any kind of agent. Do you have a Facebook fan page which is attracting your target market, offering them value, and in turn making you sales? If you don't have all these things, don't worry. Don't get freaked out. That's why you are inside this course with us. We are going to take you by your hands and help you to create your Facebook fan page in a snap. At the time of this recording, a Facebook fan likes is worth an average of $175, varying from brand to brand. 68% of marketers say Facebook ads are effective in fan and customer acquisition, meaning if you are not marketing on Facebook properly, you are leaving money on the table. Do you think they are making some money out of it? Of course they are, but here's the deal. Not everybody knows how to set up a Facebook fan page correctly. But you don't have to worry about that because you are here with us inside this course. Today, there is no easier platform to market your business on than Facebook. Now, here's the most important part of this particular video. This is the entire diagram of Facebook marketing. If you can understand this particular diagram, it'll be worth your time. Now, this is how we market our business on Facebook. As you can see, there are nine rectangles connected to each other. The first of which is find. Find means you need to find your target. You've seen the numbers. You've seen how many users there are in Facebook. How many events are happening every minute and every second. Now we have to use some techniques which will be shown to you. Step-by-step -step guide on how to find your target market. Then you have to know how to connect to the target market in the right way. Not by spamming and not by annoyingly posting in groups and all. Because those things do not work anymore and Facebook will put you in Facebook jail. So you have to approach people the right way. Then you have to add them as a friend. And then you have to send the right message by using the AIOU method, which I'll share with you later. Then you have to post the correct kind of updates on a daily basis. If you're an advanced user, you can start advertising inside Facebook. Start getting traffic, leads, and then sales. In short, you're going to get a lot of techniques in this course, starting from the very first steps you need to take, like how to connect to the right audience, how to add them, how to send the right message. Then we'll share the moderate to advanced level of post updates and all this stuff. And then we'll go to the advanced mode of Facebook advertising and dark posts and all these kind of cool things. Now you don't have to do all the things shared to you in this course. If you're already using Facebook, Facebook ads, and you're already a marketer, cool, you can do all these things. But if you're someone who is just getting started inside marketing and Facebook marketing, you can take one strategy shared over here and you can apply that and start making some money and then go to the advanced level. It's up to you. Again, we're super excited to have you in this course. I believe you're going to enjoy this kind of training. So I'll see you in the next video. Facebook Dark Post Surge. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about Facebook Dark Post, or popularly known as Facebook Unpublished Post. If you are following the leading Facebook marketers in the industry, everyone's talking about this, and everybody's talking about taking advantage of Facebook Dark Post marketing. Let's first understand what exactly Facebook Dark Post is. Dark posts are one of the most effective Facebook advertisement mechanisms that have erupted into the scene. Dark posts are unpublished Facebook posts that are not visible on your fan pages, but only visible in the targeted Facebook news feed. What I mean over here is that dark posts are something that don't appear in the news feed of your fan page, but you can super target the audience where you want the post of yours to appear. Let's first understand briefly the disadvantages of using this sort of post. Let's assume that you are a marketer and promoting four or five opportunities or launching your products. If you keep on bombing Facebook newsfeed with your posts every two hours of every single day, 
Obviously, your fans are not going to be liking that. Instead, they might even unlike or unsubscribe on your Facebook fan page. Being a marketer is all about doing things in a good manner and making it really clean. But if you can use dark posts, you don't have to post your updates into your Facebook fan page. Instead, you can let them appear in the targeted news feed of your target audience. Another advantage of using Facebook dark post is split testing. Imagine if you wanted to split five different images for a similar kind of post, or you want to split test your post appearing in the desktop news feed, the mobile device, or just on the right column of Facebook. How do you do that? You can do that by using Facebook dark post. The other advantage is, it is not your typical Facebook ad which appears on the right column of Facebook. Instead, it appears in the news feed of your targeted customers, so it's a cool marketing which you can do with your target customers. It is a very effective tool in promoting multiple offers without disturbing the integrity of your page. Another thing is that, even if you don't have fans, you can still do dark post advertisements to target your audience. Here's an example of two different posts. On the left side, you can see a normal post. On the right side, you can see the dark post. They look exactly the same, but there's a small difference. On the right image, you can see a sponsor sign, which means it's a dark post being promoted. Even if you look at the big corporates, all of them use dark posts for promoting their business all the time. Let me quickly jump inside and show you exactly how this thing works. Let's say this is a squeeze page or a captcha page I want to promote. Then I have another captcha page here, which I want to promote for some of my businesses or some of my launches. And I have another squeeze page, which I want to promote for one of my posts. There are three different kinds of pages I want to promote at the same time. Now, imagine for a second, if I keep on posting these different updates, or all these different squeeze pages inside my fan page, my fans are going to be really, really annoyed. Nevertheless, I can do exactly the same in promoting these pages by using dark post. Why? Because they're not going to appear on my own news feed. Instead, these pages are going to be appearing inside the news feeds of my targeted prospects, and that is absolutely awesome. To do that, you first need to work in Google Chrome. Why? Because dark posts can only work in Facebook Power Editor. Over here, you can see that I'm inside my own Facebook account. Go to your Ads Manager first. Once you're there, you have to click on Power Editor. Then, go to Page Posts and click on the Create Post afterwards. After you click on Create Post, this is going to appear. Now, stay focused. At the bottom, you can see two options. Number one, this post will only be used as an ad. And number two, this post will be published on the page. Remember, we want to create an unpublished post or a dark post. So let's select option number one, which will come by default. Let's fill in the needed data here. First is the URL. Put the opt-in or squeeze page here that you want to promote. So I'll use this one. Next is the post text. Let's write, discover how to build an email list while getting paid. For call to action, I'll select learn more. For the link headline, I'll put instant cash machine, which is the name of the course. For the display link and description, let's just leave them blank for now. For the picture, just upload an image from your computer. In my case, I will get the image from my desktop, as you can see it there. This step is done, so just click create post. What happens within a few short seconds is Facebook creates your dark post or your unpublished post. After the dark post is created, you have to select it by clicking the small box beside it. Then go to Actions and select Create Ad. A while ago, we just did a post. But now, we are already creating an ad for the post to target our prospects. Let's create new and name it as ICM Test. Next, for the buying type, let's choose Fixed Rate. On the other hand, our objective is Clicks to Website, which means we are encouraging people to visit our website. When you choose Page Post Engagement, 
you just want to increase the likes, comments, shares, and the likes of a specific post. And website conversions are for people to take specific actions to your website, which we don't need right now. Next, choose an ad set. I'll have to select and click on Create New, and I'll write ICM Test once again, and click Create. Once I do so, this will take a few seconds since Facebook will look inside and see whether I created a similar ad before. If I have not, they're going to take me to the page where they ask me for further information. I believe you are getting the idea, right? First, we created a sneaky little dark post, and we are creating an advertisement in simple terms based on the dark post. You can see, we are on the second page now, and we're almost complete. It takes us a bit of time to load these things, but it's all cool because Facebook will automatically load these things for us. In this particular case, you have to check this out, whether the fan page you see is the correct one. If not, you can just click the arrow over here and choose the right one. Facebook will also ask whether you want to use an existing post. Yes, of course. By default, it will select your particular dark post which you have created. You can also see the preview of the post ad in different devices like the desktop and mobile news feed and all those other previews. Obviously, we won't be using all of them, so we just select what we want to use. Once we're done with that, we just click on this, which is known as the ad sets. Our ads has been done by working simply for less than two minutes. So, in the ad sets, we will already select our target audience, the daily budget, etc. First, click on Edit. Then we can see the ad set name, which is ICM Test. I will then select the daily budget. You will see over here that it's in my currency, so I'll do an equivalent to $5. We're starting at $5 since we've said before that we won't consume a big amount of money. It's not worth it, especially when you're just starting out. Next is the schedule. Here you have to choose the date and time of your schedule. When do you want it to start and end? You also have to be aware that this schedule is based on your country's time. For example, I want to run this ad for two days from February 25th to 27th at around 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. the following two days, Philippine time. For your audience, you can just edit that to have a more specific target. For now, I won't edit it. Next is the placement where your ad will appear. If you don't want this ad to run in the audience network, for example, then it is fine. You just need to click on the check button beside it, and it will be removed. You can also choose what type of mobile devices can see your ad. When doing this, your estimated daily reach also changes, which you can see on the right side of your screen. Once we are through with this, we have to click on Upload Changes. After doing this, it will take a few seconds, and the ad will be automatically uploaded and will be sent to Facebook support for approval. And we're done. So guys, I think you get the entire idea of the advantages and how we can create a Facebook dark post or unpublished post. Let's have a recap. First, create a simple post which you want to promote. Once you are done with that, create an advertisement for that post. And in this advertisement, you can target your audience, which I've just shown you. Select their country, a community about online marketing, or things like that. Then we select our budget and all that stuff. You can choose where your particular ad would appear on Facebook. You can absolutely go to that particular level of targeting. So that will absolutely help your advertisements super duper targeted. I believe by now you got the entire idea and mastered the particular tricks. This video is a bit lengthy, but it's great doing it because the topic is very cutting edge and the good thing is, there are no dirty marketers doing this stuff. This is an absolutely clean market for where you can dominate. You are little by little upgrading yourself to become an elite marketer, and you'll be learning these things step by step. Once again, I believe you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Thank you so much, and see you. Cracking Graph Search Ninja Hey guys, in this particular video, we're going to share one of the smartest and fastest ways to build your target market of friends, and in turn build your business through the power of Facebook. I'm talking about the use 
of Facebook Graph Search. So what can we do using Facebook Graph Search? As I told you, this is one of the smartest ways to search and build your target market. You can have as many as 5,000 targeted friends. Now, listen to this particular word, targeted friends. These are not like any friends. These are people from your target market, and you can build them within 90 days using this technique. Facebook graph search functions continue to evolve almost every month as they keep on tweaking and testing things. There's a chance at the moment you're listening to this, they might have already done some changes. The good news is, the principles always remain the same. So once you follow this training, you can duplicate your own business based on this, and the basics are going to be the same. So with that, let's quickly jump into this example, personal Facebook account. Look in this particular portion of the screen, where Search Facebook is written. This particular portion is known as the graph search area. So once I search anything, for example, I search make money online, the moment I type this word, we see that there are a lot of search results given to us by Facebook. You can see all these groups comprising of 4,000, 7,000, 20,000, and all these huge numbers of people. So, with a single search, I'm exposed to millions of people inside Facebook, and then, the good thing is that all these people are all in the same target market of making money online, which means that either these people are already making money online, or they're looking for a way to make money online. And guess what? Statistics say that 98% of people are struggling to make money online. They're either making zero to less than $100 per month. So, we have a huge pool of people whom we can help, whom we can train, whom we can give value, and in turn, build our business. So, let me try to go inside in any one of these groups. Now, once I click over here, you can see there are these numbers of people who are in this particular group. And the good thing is that some groups will be open, which means we can join them directly. Some will require you to sign up in the group for free, and then the admin will accept your request. And if I click on these members straight away, it will take us to this page with a list of all the members who are in that particular group. Some of them are already friends with this example account. It'll show me others and give us options to add them as friends as well. Now, the good thing is, you can be sure all of the people inside this group are into making money online. Now I can connect to them and start adding 15 to 20 people a day, and I can start building my target market. This is one way. The other way is a pretty little ninja trick that does not require us to visit a particular group. For example, we search for the same keyword, make money online, but we don't actually click on any group. What we do is make an actual search where we click this magnifying glass search icon here. And once we make a search, Facebook will automatically show us the top, latest, people, photos, videos, pages, places, groups, apps, and events. We can click on people, and Facebook will exactly show us all the people who are having the name Make Money Online, or whose interest area are into making money online. Clicking on videos would show us the videos with Make Money Online themes around them. Obviously, the people who make those videos are interested in the subject. This is the same when you click on photos. You are taken to photos that are related to the subject. And again, the people behind these photos are engaged to that subject as well. So, with a single click, we're exposed to all these people. So what can we do instead of adding them? I can send them a direct message saying, Hey, your profile shows that you also like making money online like me. I'm so excited to meet you. Let's get connected on Facebook and let's share cool ideas. So guess what? Once you send this particular kind of message to a person, you appear different. So chances are very high that this person is going to connect with you 
and start sending messages. And who knows, you might have gotten a partner from here. So this is another way. Another cool thing is that once you change the keyword, for example, in the last search, we use the keywords make money online. If we just change that keyword a bit, change it into making money online, you'll see that we have been exposed to a whole new set of groups and people here. Now if we change our keywords to something like online traffic, again we'll be getting different sets of groups and people. Understand, just by playing with our keywords and the power of graph search, we can get exposed to thousands and millions of targeted people we can start getting connected to. But here's a warning. Do not add more than 20 to 25 people in a single day, because then you know you can be sent to the Facebook jail. Do avoid that. Send it to 15 to 20 people a day, and it will be cool. Now, what happens when you reach the stage where you have 500 friends or half? You will see the ripple effect kicking in. People start adding you because they see immediate value in you on the basis of your association with people inside the same circle as your target marketing. Also, because they see you as part of different related groups too. By ripple effect, you will exponentially start growing your friends. Now, if we do this particular technique in a methodical, systematic manner I showed you, within 90 days, you will be reaching 5,000 friends inside Facebook. This is absolutely awesome. And remember, all of them are from your target market. So you now have 5,000 friends who are from your same niche or interest area. Now, if you remember the diagram, which I shown you in the first video, the first steps are finding and connecting to the right people. So, what I've just shown you in this video are the exact steps on how to find and connect with your target market. By the way, this is completely free stuff. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Remember, if we have to get 5,000 subscribers, you might have to spend $10,000 or more. But with this technique, you can get all of them completely free of cost. Now, similarly, if you are a dog lover, and if we just typed in the keywords dog training, you can uncover, get the same kind of communities. So for example, you are a pit bull lover. You'll be getting, again, tons of people who are into pit bull community. You can share ideas with them. How you groom your pit bull, how you train your pit bull, what to feed them. You can share ideas, and you can grow your targeted Facebook friends circle. Similarly, in Make Money Online, you can teach people, you can share ideas, you stimulate questions, and you can grow. Now, this is why you see people with tons of Facebook friends requests, because these people are into Facebook marketing, and people see them providing value and helping people with useful content inside their Facebook accounts. That's how they get lots of friend requests in Ripple Effect all the time. In fact, if you do this, You'll eventually need to clear your Facebook account all the time so you can add fresh people because you know on Facebook you can only have 5,000 friends. So I hope this video has become an eye opener for you. Just get ready for tons of more content. This is just the beginning. In the next video, we'll just jump into some advanced stuff. We will start with something called bridge marketing and this will become super duper awesome. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.